Hello everybody, welcome back to my website, YouTube. We are now sitting in a pontoon boat I bought for some reason, and we're gonna continue working on this thing. So today I hope to get a bunch of wiring in. Um, I won't be able to get all of it in because I don't have all of the seats, accessories, or consoles that I wanna put in here, but we can at least get the basics of it started and then add to it later. So I wanted to do the wiring steps in order of importance, but the more I think about it, the more I realize I don't really know which that is because they're all kind of important. So I'll still kind of continue on that theme, but I don't know how well it's going to actually work. Back corner seat here is where I plan on putting the battery. Um, it's pretty much all I think I need in there, but you know, there's plenty of room in there. So this is the battery that I bought for the boat when I went to go buy it. The smaller standard size, one that's really about that big was the same price as this one. So I said, well, screw that, I want the bigger one. And then I was thinking about it, and I was like, well, I don't know if that's gonna fit in my seat base now, but we'll give it a try. You know what, that, that actually is a pretty good fit. That fits in there pretty well, um, right between those two little built-in seat channels. So I think that's where it's gonna be. I could probably yeah, quite fit like that. So it looks like right there is where it's gonna, where it's gonna be. Maybe I'll have it. Right there, so it's easier to get in and out. That way you don't have to slide it to get the handles. Yeah, I think that'll work. I think I'll put it there. So the plan to hold this battery down into that seat is to use two of these guys. One on each side, screwed into the floor, so just have the top sticking out. I'll use the ratchet, attach it into that bolt, or around that bolt rather, with the strap. That way I can ratchet down the battery, so regardless what battery size I have, I can put it in here via my ratchet strap. Um, the only thing is you don't want the ratchet strap off to the side of the battery. I want to keep it down here below. So it looks like I only have a few inches here to kind of wrap around, but I think that'll work perfectly. So I'm going to go sew that up and see how it goes. Alright, let's see how well this goes. The plan is to not sew anything I shouldn't and not... Uh, have to do this ten times. Yeah, I guess that kind of worked. Right, little back stitch, screwed that up. No big deal. Maybe they are gonna see it. Except for everybody in the world. All right, so that's good enough. There, but it's all good. And that looks like a factory stitch if I've ever seen one. Look at that. You can't even tell. Alright, now for the other side. Hopefully I've learned a little. Foot switch somewhere easy to reach. Thread. So I'm going to mark where about my e bolts. Get a little sharpie here.
I went under the boat and tightened these uh, square bolts down. I think they're called square U-bolts, but anyway. So those are now kind of a permanent part of the boat. Um, if I ever want to change the strap, I'll have to go under there and undo the bolts, pull the U-bolt out, and then change the strap. Um, I was also thinking about making these loose so there's a little more strap play, but I don't really know if I need to, so I don't think I will. So right by that warning label is now where I plan on putting two large holes for the wiring to run through. One set of wiring is going to be for the boat, the other set is going to be running for the engine. The engine battery terminals are pretty large, so we need a pretty big hole there to get them through. But I'm going to use one of these uh, step bits. The smaller one will be fine for my boat wiring, and then I'll have to use the larger one for the engine wiring. bits weren't the best of ideas because it's a pretty weirdly tapered hole now. Uh, let me get a real drill bit. That's just silly. two big holes for my wiring. So let's go ahead and install our battery. It fits right. Which it looks like it will. Now the strap is obviously way too long. So we're going to trim that down a bit. And to get it out, you have to do a little release on the ratchet. It releases, it comes right out. I like it. All right, getting the controller mounted is pretty important at this point. Just because you know, need that wiring that's inside of there. So I'm going to uh, drill and screw that plate back on. I should use rivets. I have the rivets, but I don't know where the rivet gun is, so that's kind of pointless. But this will work for now. And should have come loose and we'll drill bigger holes and put rivets. Alright, controller is in and kind of mounted. It's a little off, so I want to fix and re-drill some holes, but for the most part, it can stay like that for now. So here we are on the back of the controller. What should happen here is these plugs go straight down along with my shift and throttle cables. It should go straight down. The problem is I don't know if I necessarily like that. What I think I'd rather them do is follow this pole and then turn down and go into the uh, bottom of the boat down here. So, cables can make that bend somewhat, so it'll kind of look more like that when it's all said and done, but that's, that's not too bad, I would think. So what I need to do is connect these plugs into that console, and I don't want plugs coming down, so I think I'm going to make an extension harness to come around this pole, down there, into the boat, underneath, and then back up into the console. So, I don't know... That's a lot of wire, but eh. Let's go ahead and guesstimate how long they need to be. So I got about a foot.
Close on two feet. So we have four feet. So if I make a six foot harness, because we're at one, two, four, so six. What was that for? That's a six. So I think if I make it seven feet long, that'll be plenty. So seven and a half. Yeah, let's do that. All right, here is the little harness I made. Covered in some of this expanding tubing and has all nine pairs of wires with the terminals crimped on the end. That'll fit those plugs. If you want to see more about crimping and harness making, watch my video on how I originally made the engine harness for this motor. Well, not for this motor, but for a motor. So give that video a watch and you'll kind of understand how I did it. All right, I need to put a pretty massive hole into the floor right where that uh, support goes in. Luckily, there's no cross braces for the pontoons down there, so I won't have any uh, issues with that. And then I need to feed in the controller cables as well as my new extension harness. And then that is a huge ugly hole. Yeah, I'll vacuum this up later. All right, good enough. For no reason. Let's get our cables in first. We'll do the six prong first. This is our mating connector. And I now notice that none of that was in frame. When I do the other side, I'll make sure it was. You can actually see what I'm doing. So that is the main engine. Now the power trim and tilt, which is the three wire. Do that next. Use our plug body for it. Front one. All right. Now I need another massive hole down to the console here for all the wiring to run in and out. now all right that is done now I got to crawl under the boat run the engine harness into here as well as the new extension harness all right kind of see down there I forgot about the power trim and tilt harness being separate from the engine harness so that's what this bundle is inside of here for whatever reason it's a lot longer than the engine harness so now I just need to isolate the wires before the power trim and tilt these are these six, which go to the motor. Alright. All right, tack harness, the most important one here, I think, is connected and made and ready for service. Wires going in the correct order. Other end of the harness looks like this. Now, if you have a Johnson Evergood and a tachometer harness, you're gonna recognize these three wires. If you have a Mercury, 
you still are going to recognize these three wires. The only difference would be you have these two built in it as well. See with the Mercury, they use a five wire tachometer harness. These three are still present, but these two run for the uh, tilt and trim gauge. I think I think Evner did it better running it in here because if you have an engine without power trim and tilt, you don't have these extra wires. But here we are. Anyhow. So everything is uh, kind of ready to be hooked up, except for these two wires. I'm going to have to run those, but considering everything else I've done today, that's no big deal. So we can now start wiring our gauges. All right, let's start hooking up some gauges. I have a bunch of stuff spread it on the floor where I can't reach it. I need all that. So when these are installed, I won't be able to see what I'm doing. So I have some colored electrical tape and some black electrical tape to guide me along. So we have battery, ground, signal. So I'll use this for ground, purple, to be our battery, and I'll leave blank for yeah, signal, in this case gray. So I'm just going to put a piece of tape onto the little terminal next to it so I can see what does what? Good plan, huh? Alright, so I went ahead and drew out my pontoon boat layout. So I can show you kind of my plan here. So here is the battery. So the plan is off the positive here, I'm going to have two fuses. Negative here, I'm going to run a cable underneath the seat coming out and grounding to the boat here. Now this is the, the ground wire. I'm going to run it across the boat along and into the console where it will meet up and ground out. Positive won't ground the boat obviously. It'll run along and meet up and power everything in here. The plan is to add what I want to call a secondary console or an accessory console over here. It'll be made out of wood and in theory match this console. Reason I don't have a radio in the primary console is I don't care. The sound of the birds chirping and the engine roaring and the water hitting the pontoons is more than enough music that I need. But passengers, they need it. And let's be honest, this boat is for taking out friends and family. Chances are they're not going to want to suffer to listen to whatever I want to listen to. So I'm going to put the radio over here and give them control of everything. Over here also is where I plan on putting all of the switches for the LED interior lights as well as all of the lights for the awning, they'll all be controlled out of here, so the accessory console. So the plan is with one of the two fuses over the batteries is run it over here to the accessory console to power the accessory console. And then the other wire runs over here. So we need a power wire going from here to here, which will try on a relay turn on the accessory console. We'll worry about that later when that's built. We need lights, you know, for running lights and then a horn for safety. Horn I plan on putting up here in the corner. I know that looks more like a light, but it's a horn. So from the horn switch, I'm going to run a wire, join with that horn, run over, and join with this horn. Now I don't want to rely on the boat's ground, so I'm going to run another wire for ground to tie into the ground of the horn and tie into the other ground of the horn. Now when I say accessories, I also... Well, let me back up. So the accessory switch, it's going to go in here also. It'll hit a relay, which will run over and turn on this one. It'll also turn on my USB plug here. But I also want power wires up here for either a cigarette lighter or a USB plug or both. So I'm going to run a 14 gauge wire from the console, pair into there somewhere, and then hook up over here somewhere. 
That way, later on in the future, I can run the wire from one of these seats right into where my power wires are going to go. Now we also have interior lights, so those will also need to go there. I'll make a little terminal block or something up here. So we'll have one there that will run across the boat and plug in over here. So we need a four power wire up there and across that will power accessories, lights, horn, and a ground. So that's, that's basically it for you know, what I needed this console. So for now, I need to run a power wire and a ground wire along the floor into the console. This is the fuse box I plan on using for it. Theory here, main one will be just, just uh, a small 16 gauge wire for powering the switches. That's pretty much all it's going to do, and then it'll run off from the switches. It'll power all the switches, run back down, and hit on all the other relays I plan on adding. So we'll have power, switch power, or whatever I want to put on it power. This fuse will be for the um, accessories. So here and everywhere else. Second one is interior light. Well, not interior. Running lights. Third one is horn. Horn is going to be dedicated circuit out on its own. So for this key little element is what's called our bus bar. All I need to do is hook up one wire to here. This will fit inside of our fuse block and it will power the entire fuse rail. After that, I'm going to have these terminals, which are not obviously a little bus bar. They're independent. So right above the fuse block I will have the three relays from the fuse straight to the power port of the relay. This wire will bypass this, go to the switches, switches will come back down and hit it up in each one of these relays turned off. I hope that kind of makes sense. It's going to be pretty difficult to wire and a lot to show you. Where did I get all those parts you ask? How do I know how to do this stuff? Yeah, there's one little book I have. It's a 1995 Packard Electric product handbook. It is the last version they made before they went digital. Within here shows you all the different connectors and types of products that Packard once made. And you can scroll through this book long enough and pretty much find anything to fit any thing you could dream of making. So let's find the fuse block section. Alright, there it is. That's the one I ordered. Now, they have all kinds of different fuse blocks that you could make, depending on what kind of application or whatever you're trying to design. I don't think... I think they went away from this kind of thing, you know, a book in writing, because I think they started making components to fit what they wanted. I don't think... You know, like, I think in the late 70s, 80s, they flipped through the book and said, okay, that'll fit, let's make this fit our car we're working on. Cool. I think by the mid-90s, they, you know, GM or Ford or whoever went to them and said, I need this. And they, they stopped making just generic parts and just made everything kind of to fit. So a lot of this book is pretty obsolete. A lot of the parts you can still get, luckily, because they're used on all kinds of things. But it's also handy if you're trying to... Um, identify connectors but that's how I plan on doing it the reason I'm kinda gonna shy away from the how-to is first nobody's got that book that thing was impossible for me to get that took some serious begging and I've had it for I don't know at least 10 years now I don't I don't see another one coming being that easy to come by although if anybody does have one please let me know because I would love to have another uh, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, step-by-step -step how to. There's just too much stuff here to be able to do a step-by-step -step how to. Maybe if I have enough requests for it, I'll do it with the uh, accessory console. But for the most part, it's just it's just too much. So let me let me give you one little idea. There's two primary crimpers I'm going to need for this project. One is this guy, it can crimp doubles on terminals, so with these brass terminals here, I can get two you know, 16 or 14 gauge wires and crimp them both into one, makes it look great. That's where this crimper comes in. I don't know what this guy costs, I wanna say it's a couple hundred dollars. 
So there's that. This is the second clipper. It's for uh, 10 and 12 gauge wires primarily, but you can do 14s with it. I mean, you can even, uh, you can do all kinds of stuff with it actually. Next one is the 12 gauge sealed connector housing crimper. Uh, this guy is expensive all by itself. Again, I want to say $200. Maybe it's only $180. A lot of these crimpers, they're about $160, $180. But the more specialty ones, that's when they creep past $200. So this is, this is an expensive thing to do if you need to buy the tools. If you don't, dirt cheap. Fuse block, it's like a, like a buck. Three relay sockets, each one of these is like 40 cents. I think the bus bar was the most expensive terminal I had to buy. I want to say this was two bucks. But past that, you know, we're looking at, you know, 12 cents each. These being silver plated are a little bit more at like 20 cents a piece. So it's, it's pretty cheap. But again, I already have the tools. All right, these are the horns I plan on installing into the boat. These were once in a 1972 Ford F-250, I believe. Now they're going into a boat to live in an environment which they were never designed to live, and we'll see how long they last. So as you can see, they have a yellow wire, which is why I'm using ye yellow wire for the horns, and that should be the yellow, only yellow wire in the entire boat. So I'll go under there, bolt these on, and uh, run the harness for them. All right, let me show you what we got. Get the seat up and off. Battery, strap, wires. So the red, Tangled. Don't know how I did that. Fix that later. All right. This should clip on right here. This is going to be the main fuse, or it is the main fuse. So should one of these wires chafe or wear through somewhere where it passes through one of the uh, support structures of the boat, if it does short out, the main fuse will blow here before the boat burns down. So that's the uh, that's the idea there. Wire runs under there, along the back. And up into the console. Run the console. Runs up. Hits that fuse block. Fuse block goes to the relays. Switch panel right there. Turns on and off the relays. From the relays, it runs back into the floor and runs to wherever it needs to go. Gauges, if you can see them. Purple jumps from that gauge to that gauge to that gauge, as does the ground. That powers all the grounds. I still need to hook up the signal wire for the tachom tachom. What is this thing? Uh, uh, trim sender. There you go. Need to hook up that signal wire, but that's no big deal. I also uh, need to hook up a little ground uh, stud system in here. We have two wires hanging off of the relays that aren't being used. This one is the uh, interior lights and exterior. Sorry. Running lights, it'll run back into the floor, under the boat, through that hole up there, through the top hinge, and into the roof, which obviously isn't here. When the accessory relay, or that first one, is powered, it'll also power this wire. This will be a signal wire. It'll run back into the floor, across right there, and up into this console. Another relay will be installed, which will power everything in that in that console. And that's that's basically uh, where I am. There is a pile of wires in here, but for the most part, we're good to go. And I filmed this before I filmed me turning it on, so you're going to see some sawdust down here. Apologize for that. But let's turn it all on. Show you how it works. All right, got a little bit of a mess going on down here, but should be about done. So I have the engine harness hooked up to another engine harness I had hooked up to the battery. That will simulate the outboard being attached. All fuses and relays are installed and everything is hooked up. Hooked up the wires, no sparks, so we don't have a power draw or a, a short or anything. At least that's one simple way to tell. So for the most part, I think we're ready to actually turn that key and see what we get. Now I did break the switch that goes here, and that's a little unfortunate. Got another one on its way. Actually, I got two. One is a spare. These switches, they really do suck. So if you're going to buy some on Amazon, which, you know, is what it is. You can't expect too much. But the wiring that was originally attached 
is stronger than the terminal. So when you go to unplug it, it breaks out the terminal. That happened twice. I had one spare switch because I had to swap out the horn, but didn't have another one. So I'm buying some actual Carling ones. So they should be a little better quality. All right, turn off the main shop lights. That way you can see the lights a little better, fortunately. Still quite bright in here. So I turn the key, switch lights should pop on. Hey, look at that. So far, so good. Now when I hit the key, our gauges should come alive too. So let's see. Yep. Battery is reading 12 volts. Should actually be 12.5. So it should be a hair higher than it is, but apparently that's our adjustment. Uh, lights are on, so we're good there. Let's see if our horn works. Yeah, I'd say that works. And it sounds like a truck too. Next thing is interior lights, or actually running lights. And uh, it's kind of hard to tell, but yeah, those lit up fine. I'll probably swap out the normal light bulbs for some little blue LEDs so they match my switches a little better. And it's going to be kind of, well, I could probably jump these two reds right here to simulate the accessory wire going on. So let's do that. Yep. And that powers up my USB plug. Here's the relay clicking too. So I think we're good to go. So I still got to crawl under the boat and use some of those, uh, little wire clamps and clamp everything down. I'll do that later. It's pretty dirty, nasty under there, so I don't really want to do it right now. And I've been doing this for two days. I got to get inside, otherwise girlfriend's going to get all mad at me. So yeah, time to go, I suppose. Um, thanks for watching the video, as always. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, join me next time where I...